Stop what you're doing. Seriously, just pause for a second. Take everything you think you know about Philippine history, the dusty textbooks, the memorized dates, the boring migration theories, and just delete it. Because there is a massive, glaring hole in the story of us. A missing piece of biological code that science barely even knew existed until, like, yesterday. We're talking about the 50K secret, Denisovans in the Philippines. And no, this isn't sci-fi. This is your blood. Listen, I'm not here to give you a history lesson to pass a quiz. I'm here because if you are Filipino or have Filipino ancestry, you are walking around with a secret inside you. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to prove that you are a hybrid. We're going to connect a world record scientific discovery from 2021 directly to those terrifying stories your Lola told you about giants hiding in the Balete trees. By the end of this, you'll never look at a dark forest or a mirror the same way again. So here's the thing. There's this, let's call it a conspiracy of silence. Not the tinfoil hat kind, but the academic kind. The science world is obsessed with Europe, right? Neanderthals this, cave paintings in France that. They love the narrative that history is a Western invention. But while everyone was looking at Europe, something massive was happening in our backyard. For decades, we were told the Philippines was empty until modern humans drifted in. But the caves in Bataan? They've been screaming a different story. Before we get to the Philippines, we have to talk about the ghost. Who are the Denisovans? Why do I keep calling them ghosts? Because unlike Neanderthals, where we have skeletons and skulls, we have almost nothing of the Denisovans. I mean, literally, for years, the entire existence of this species was based on a pinky bone and a couple of teeth found in a Siberian cave. That's it. They are what scientists call a genome in search of a fossil. We knew their DNA existed before we knew what they looked like. Let's fast forward to 2021. The world is locked down, but in a lab in Uppsala University, scientists are looking at data that made their jaws hit the floor. A team led by Maximilian Lorena was analyzing the genomes of 118 ethnic groups in the Philippines. They were expecting the usual mix, some Austronesian, some Spanish, the usual suspects. But then they looked at the DNA of the Ita Magbukon, the indigenous people living on the Bataan Peninsula, and the sequencing machines basically started screaming. They found that the Ita Magbukon hold the world record. They have the highest level of Denisovan ancestry on the planet. More than Tibetans, more than Australians. We're talking up to 5% of their entire genome. Now, 5% might sound small to you, but in genetics, that is massive. That's not just a random fling 50,000 years ago. That is a direct, thick line to a ghost species. It means their ancestors didn't just meet Denisovans. They lived with them. Why Bataan? Picture Mount Marivelles. It's rugged, steep, covered in thick jungle. It's the kind of place you go if you don't want to be bothered. The study suggests that while later waves of migration, like the Austronesians, came into the lowlands and mixed with East Asians, diluting that ancient DNA, the ancestors of the Ita Magbukon stayed isolated up there. They were basically in a genetic time capsule. They protected their heritage, intentionally or not, for tens of thousands of years. You have to understand what this implies. For a population to retain 5% of another species' DNA after 50,000 years, the initial mixing had to be intense. It wasn't just warfare or a brief encounter. It means multiple generations of coexistence, families, hybrid children running around the jungles of Luzon. It changes the whole picture from survival of the fittest to something way more complex. It was a melting pot way before we had a name for it. Okay, let's pause for a second, because I know exactly what some of you are thinking right now. I can practically hear the gears turning. You're sitting there, maybe typing a comment like this guy. 
wait a minute. Huge, ancient humans living in the mountains, hiding in the deep forest? Is this, is this the Capre? Hold that thought. Seriously, put a pin in it, because we are going to go there. That connection between myths and monsters, we're getting there. But first, we have to figure out something even crazier. How did these giant guys get to the Philippines in the first place? Because 50,000 years ago, that trip was supposed to be impossible. If you look at the map of the Ice Age, the Philippines wasn't part of the mainland. It was a fortress. Let's talk geography, but make it high stakes. The Wallace Line. It's this invisible biological barrier. To the west, tigers, elephants, monkeys. To the east, marsupials and us. The water there is deep, like ocean trench deep. Even during the Ice Age, when sea levels dropped and you could walk from Vietnam to Borneo, the Philippines was still an island chain. It was surrounded by a moat. So if Denisovans didn't have wings, how did they cross? This is where scientists get into fistfights. Some conservative archaeologists say, oh, it was an accident. A tsunami swept them out to sea on a tangled mess of trees and they got lucky. Yeah, right. Try surviving a tsunami on a log. The other theory, the cooler one? They were sailors. Bamboo rafts. Intent. If they crossed the Wallace Line, it means they had language, planning, and the guts to look at the horizon and say, let's go there. But wait, it gets more crowded. We're not just talking about Denisovans. In 2019, right up north in Cagayan, inside Kalau Cave, scientists found another species, Homo luzonensis. Small, adapted for climbing trees. These guys were living there at least 67,000 years ago. So picture the Philippines back then. It wasn't empty. It was like Middle Earth. You had tiny hobbit-like guys in the north, giant Denisovans in the mountains, and then us, sapiens, showing up. This brings us back to that comment about the capre. Anthropologists have this concept called fossilized memory. It's the idea that some myths aren't just made up, they are memories of real events passed down for 10,000 generations until history turns into magic. What if the stories of giants in the Philippines aren't monsters? What if they are memories of the people we used to share this land with? Let's break it down. What's a capre? Tall, dark-skinned, hairy, Super muscular, lives in the deep forest. Now, look at what we know about Denisovans, from their DNA and the few bones we have. They had dark skin, dark eyes, and were incredibly robust. Wide chests, thick bones. Were they 10 feet tall? Probably not. That's the myth inflation. But compared to an early Homo sapien, who might have been 5'5 and skinny, a 6-foot, 200-pound Denisovan would look like a giant. And then there's the Bungusnis, the one-eyed giant specifically from Bataan folklore, the same place as the Aita Magbukon. The Bungusnis is said to have huge teeth or tusks. Guess what? Denisovans had massive teeth. Their molars were huge, some so big scientists first thought they were cave bear teeth. Imagine you're an early human. You see these guys smile with these thick chompers. You tell your kids, beware the big tooth men. 10,000 years later, that story becomes the giant with tusks. The geography matches perfectly. The highest concentration of Denisovan DNA is in the Aita Magbukon of Bataan. The specific legends of the Bungasnis and some of the most intense Capre stories come from Bataan. It's too perfect to be a coincidence. It suggests that the Aita Magbukon didn't just carry the DNA, they carried the story. They remembered the giants long after the giants were gone. Here's another weird puzzle piece. Remember I said Tibetans also have Denisovan DNA? Well, they got a specific gene from them called EPAS1. It's a superpower gene that lets them breathe at high altitudes without their blood getting too thick. It's a survival gene. Now, the Aita Magbukon don't live on Everest, 
but it shows what Denisovan DNA does. It's about adaptation to tough environments. We are walking around with ancient survival software installed in our hardware. So where are they now? Why don't we see Denisovans walking down Edza? Did we kill them? Did we bring new diseases? Or did we just absorb them? The genetic evidence points to absorption. We didn't just wipe them out. We married them. We had kids with them. And over thousands of years, their distinct population faded, but their code lived on in us. Now, a quick side note, because the internet is a wild place. You're going to search for this, and you're going to find videos talking about Maharlika kingdoms and Talano gold and ancient lost civilizations with advanced tech. Stop. We don't need to make stuff up. The truth, that we coexisted with another human species and survived the Ice Age, is way cooler than any made-up fantasy about gold bars. Let's stick to the real science. People are obsessed with finding the Yamashita treasure or the Talano gold. But the real treasure isn't buried in a tunnel. It's buried in the cells of the Aite Madwukon. It's a biological record of humanity's resilience. That is worth more than any gold bar, because it answers the biggest question of all. Where do we come from? So, what does this all mean for you, watching this right now? It means if you have Filipino ancestry, you are not just Homo sapiens. You are a hybrid. You are a mosaic. You are carrying the genetic memory of a lost world inside your own cells. The Denisovans didn't completely die out. They live on, in your immune system, in your skin, maybe even in the shape of your teeth. The ghost isn't haunting you. The ghost is part of you. But here's the kicker. The people who hold this record, the Aita Magbukon, they are fighting right now to keep their land, their culture, and their language alive. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? We celebrate the cool science, but we ignore the actual people holding the data. If we lose their culture, we lose the context for this 50,000-year-old story. They are the guardians of a genetic treasure. So, next time someone tells you Philippine history started with Magellan or even with the Austronesian migrations, tell them they're missing the first 10 chapters of the book. Tell them about the Ice Age fortress. Tell them about the multiple species of humans running around Luzon. Tell them that the history of the Philippines isn't just about who arrived. It's about who was already here and who we became when we met them. We've covered the deep past, but what happened when the world started to shrink? Next time on the Unifying Lens Origins, we're jumping forward, not to Magellan, to the other Spanish fleet that vanished in the Pacific five years later. The one that might have crashed and started a whole new story that history tried to erase. You do not want to miss it. Alright, I want to hear from you in the comments. Seriously, let's argue about this. Do you think the Capre and Bumgisnis legends are fossilized memories of Denisovans? Or am I just reading way too much into it? Drop a comment below. And if you learned something that blew your mind today, hit that like and subscribe button to keep digging up the secrets they didn't teach you in school. This is the Unifying Lens. Stay curious and keep looking for the ghosts in the machine.